Right, welcome to today's discussion on the time value of money. The time value of money is the most important concept in all of finance, and it is a crucial underpinning to anything that we want to do in the subject. Okay, now time value of money, we define that as simply being valuing future cash flows back to a current value, putting all of the cash flow values in a same time period. Now, the reason we're going to look at this and we're going to use this concept of the time value of money is that there is a huge variety of things that we can purchase, a ton of assets, right? We can buy stocks, we can buy bonds, we can buy real estate, we can buy really a huge number of other things as well. And we need to be able to specify if the future cash flows that are coming in, in are worth the amount that I'm paying. Right now, many of you are going to be renters, right? I've been a renter for a very long time. And let's say you're renting a house, okay? So we're looking at the value of a house. Let's say we have a value of a house of $100,000, okay? And it is renting out every month for $1,200 a month, okay? Is this going to be worthwhile for us to do? That's a question that we're just looking at it is that it's hard to say, right? We're going to spend $100,000 right now and buy a house to rent out to someone. And there's going to be cash flows coming in in the amount of $1,200. Okay. Is this a worthwhile investment or not? Okay. Because we know we're not going to get that $100,000 back right now. It might take us 20 years, 30 years, whatever it is. And to figure out, is it worth it for us? to do this, to buy this house and, and do it, okay? Same thing is gonna be going on when we value a stock, when we value a bond, right? You see the, the price of a stock of Facebook or Microsoft or Apple or whoever, and you see the stock, the price running across the ticker or looking at Yahoo or Google Finance, and you see the price, okay? When that price is gonna be dependent on future cash flows, how much is coming back from those companies, okay? So there's a few terms that we need to define straight up right off the front. Okay, PV is going to be equal to our present value. Okay, and that is going to be the value of that asset today, the value of that cash flow today. Okay, so that would be the equivalent of that hundred thousand dollars on the house. Okay, so that would be the hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And then we're going to be looking at this next one here, which is FV. Anybody have an idea what that might be? Well, it's going to be future value. Okay. So that is the future cash flow that we're going to be receiving. Okay. So we're looking at this. This is that $1,200 receiving every month. That is a future value, future values, because there's multiples of them. And that it is saying, all right, in the future, I'm going to receive this cash flow. At the present time, that is what that future cash flow is worth to me today. All right, now I know this is kind of getting confusing, kind of kind of sorting like, okay, what's the difference here? It's probably going to get more confusing and I'm going to try not to, uh, to make it be so. Um, but another way to think about it is that we look at a present value of being, let's say I have $100 in my wallet and I think about going down to the bank. Uh, I put my $100 in the bank account. Uh, and then it accrues at an interest rate, R, right? It accrues at that interest rate. And after one year, okay, if it's a 10% interest rate and I put $100 in, in one year it's going to be worth $110, okay? That 110 would be the future value. The 100 would be the present value, okay? The difference that is coming in is going to be R. Right? That is our interest rate. That is our required rate of return. We call this R a number of different things depending on what it is exactly that we are measuring. And then T is going to be the number of time periods. Okay. So that is going to be the basic part of the time value of money. All right, so this is our basic model. We have the future value equals the present value multiplied by one plus R to the T power. Now this equation here, this is, this is such a basic fundamental equation. We rearrange this, we do a lot of stuff. Almost everything we're gonna be doing throughout my class is using this equation. It's just gonna be setting it up in slightly different manners, okay? Now we had this example before where we had a present value of 
of $100, right? Let's say I have $100 and I'm gonna go stick it in a bank account, okay? And let's say that that bank account or is gonna generate 10% for me, got a really good bank account, right? It's gonna generate 10% for me. I wanna know what is that gonna be worth if it sits in that account for a year, okay? So our T here is going to be one. Okay. Now, I know most of you guys can just look at this and just say, oh, yeah, you know, that's going to be 110. You don't have to really set it into, a, into a, uh, a formula. But we're just going to be doing that right now because we want to just make sure that we're, everything's congealing. Uh, so we have 100 multiplied by 1.1 to the first power, right? So our future value is $110. Okay. Now the next step that we can do is we can say, all right, what happens again if I leave that in the account, right? So it's worth now $110. What if I can still earn 10% and I just leave it in that account and let it grow next year, okay? How much is my gain gonna be? Here, right, on this one right here, my gain was $10. How much is my gain next year gonna be? Is it gonna be $10? No, because it's compounding on that $110, right? We're gonna be receiving 10% interest on the hundred and ten dollars okay so what we're gonna do so this is for year one and we're now we're gonna look at for year two okay so we're gonna try and figure out what our future value is in year two okay we're gonna have hundred and ten dollars as our starting value okay so at the end of the year we're putting hundred ten dollars back in the account and it's still the 1.1 to the first which tells us that we have a future value in year two of $121, okay? Now, if we wanna look at year three, we can do the same thing. We can take the 121 multiply it by 1.1. But there's a much, much faster way to go about doing this, and that is by using that exponent right there, if we have a constant rate of return, okay? Because what we see is that we can actually institute this in here in a little bit more of a straightforward way. Okay. We can use this $100 value at the beginning of the time period, and then essentially what we're doing is we're multiplying it by that 1.1 for year one, okay, which this generates for us, right, the 110. And remember that we took that 110 and we multiplied it by the one plus r, by that 1.1 as well. So we can just multiply this by the 1.1 there. Okay, now a simpler way to, to set that up, right? So you don't have to write the 100 multiplied by 1.1 multiplied by 1.1 again, is that we can just simplify that and it's going to be the 100 multiplied by 1.1 squared, right? Just like we see in that top equation there, okay? So if we did that here, a future value, and you plug this in, I guarantee you, you're gonna run up with the same exact number at $121. And that's the basic part that we're looking at, right? And so what we're able to do with this is that we can just set up other equations and just run them right through and run them through really quick and get some really quick answers to them, okay? All the next lectures that we're looking at are going to be pulling up a few other applications of the time value of money and expanding on it in substantially more detail.